So remember the first step, let's expand out hyperbolic cos uh, x plus alpha using the identity hyperbolic cos a plus b. Okay, so on the left, two hyperbolic cos x plus hyperbolic sine x, but on the right, r open up a square bracket. Now, bearing in mind Osborne's rule, the identity should be hyperbolic cos a, hyperbolic cos b, plus, and that's because of Osborne's rule, hyperbolic sine a, hyperbolic sine b. So over here, a is x, b is alpha, so if I apply this identity, I'll get hyperbolic cos x, hyperbolic cos alpha, plus hyperbolic sine x, hyperbolic sine alpha. And in the next step, let me equate the coefficients of cos and then sine on both sides. So when you equate the coefficients, do, uh, do the calculation, so do the step in the order of cos then sine. So cos appears first, so whichever term appears first, uh, compare those coefficients firstly. So since cos appears first, okay, let me take a red pen, let me equate the coefficients of cos first. So let me write down the step firstly. So by equating coefficients of hyperbolic cos and then hyperbolic sine on both sides. So since hyperbolic cos appears first, let's equate those coefficients firstly. So on the left, I have two, that is equal to, on the right, coefficient of hyperbolic cos is r hyperbolic cos alpha. Let me call that equation one. And let me take a green pen. Let me equate the coefficients of hyperbolic sine on both sides. So hyperbolic sine x, coefficient on the left is one. That is equal to coefficient of hyperbolic sine on the right is r, so don't forget the r, r hyperbolic sine alpha. Let me call that equation two. So from here on, to work out alpha first, remember the idea, divide equation two by equation one. So divide two by one. So if I do this operation, 2 over 1 on the left hand side is 1 over 2, that is equal to 2 over 1 on the right hand side, that is r hyperbolic sine, divided by r hyperbolic cos, and r should cancel, and hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cos is hyperbolic tan. And to work out alpha, alpha will be the inverse hyperbolic tan of 1 over 2. Now, you can use your definition in order to work out alpha. Remember the definition of hyperbolic tan inverse. Let me jot it down in the corner. Definition is 1 over 2 ln 1 plus x over 1 minus x. So that is the definition of hyperbolic tan x. So if I replace the x's in this definition by half, I'm going to get 1 over 2 ln 1 plus x, which is half. So 1 plus half divided by 1 minus x, which is half. So simplifying further, I'll have 1 over 2 ln 1 plus half is 3 over 2 divided by 1 minus half is half and if I simplify further this will give me half ln 3 which is the same as ln 3 to the power half okay so using a law of logs half ln 3 is the same as ln 3 raised to the power half 
which is the same as ln square root of 3. That is uh, alpha. So to work out r, remember the idea, we first square these equations. So by squaring equations 1 and 2. So if I square these equations, 1 and 2, Squaring equation 1, 2 squared is 4. That is equal to r squared hyperbolic cos squared alpha. Let me call that equation 3. And if I square equation 2, 1 squared is 1. That is r squared hyperbolic sine squared alpha. Let me call that equation number 4. And the next step, remember the idea, we need to subtract in the order 3 minus 4. Okay, so you need to, when you calculate the next step, when you subtract in particular, uh, do the process in the order, the cos squared minus the sine squared equation, because hyperbolic cos squared minus hyperbolic sine squared is 1. So let me continue over here. So Let's calculate equation 3 minus equation 4. So in the order hyperbolic cos squared minus hyperbolic sine squared. So on the left hand side we'll have 4 minus 1 being 3. That is equal to on the right hand side r squared hyperbolic cos squared alpha minus r squared hyperbolic sine squared alpha. So I'll take an R squared as a common factor, leaving me with hyperbolic cos squared alpha minus hyperbolic sine squared alpha. Okay. And remember Osborne's rule, hyperbolic cos squared minus hyperbolic sine squared is 1. So R squared is 3. R is the square root of 3. Now, if I replace r with the root of 3 and alpha by ln of the root of 3 into the very first uh, stage, okay, we're going to have 2 hyperbolic cos x plus hyperbolic sine x and that is the same as, okay, r which is the root of 3, so root of 3, hyperbolic cos x plus and alpha was ln root 3. So that is the outcome for the very first part of the problem. And remember the next part of the problem is to state the range. So let's do this. So for the range, first write down the range of hyperbolic cos. Okay, so the range of y equals hyperbolic cos x. So here's the range. Hyperbolic cos x is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so this is the range of hyperbolic cos. Then write down the range of hyperbolic cos x plus ln root 3. So the range of hyperbolic cos x plus ln root of 3. So still greater than or equal to 1, so it doesn't alter the 1 on the right. This is purely a translation, a horizontal translation, okay? So it wouldn't alter the 1 on the right. And then finally, the range of root 3, hyperbolic cos, x plus ln root 3. All we do here is multiply this inequality throughout by root 3. So if you multiply throughout by root 3, you're going to have root 3 hyperbolic cos x plus ln root 3, that's greater than or equal to 1 times root 3, root 3. So that is the outcome for the second part. Now the third part is to sketch. So let's sketch uh, this curve. So with the sketch, So let me draw two axes, x and y axes. So here's my x axis, here's my y axis, here's the origin. Okay. So 
remember the the shape of hyperbolic cos x so this is y equals hyperbolic cos x and hyperbolic cos x crosses the y axis at 0 1 and in order to sketch root 3 hyperbolic cos x plus ln root 3 so when uh, doing the sketch use this part of the equation they're both the same so left does equal the right so I'm going to use this part of the equation to help me with the sketch so hyperbolic cos x plus ln root 3 so the plus means I'm moving to the left so I'm moving to the left by ln root 3 units okay so effectively the x coordinate of that uh, minimum point will be minus ln root 3 and the y coordinate of the minimum point will be the value of r which is root 3 so these values give you the coordinates of the minimum point and when you draw your sketch this is what you should have okay